So just like that, now our bait looks lopsided. Super duper. Let's freehand draw a line so it's really screwed up. Okay, regular viewers, Happy New Year. Merry Christmas, everybody. Hope everybody had a good New Year's. And uh, we are back. This week, um, I took my father fishing. I don't know if you saw our New Year's video, but uh, first day of the New Year, my father caught a pretty nice bass. I think it was about three pounds. He'll probably tell you it was four. If I caught it and he saw it, it would have been one and a half, maybe two. But uh, that was on this mullet glide bait right here. Um, this was the replacement for the one that I made uh, when my, my son and I made uh, a glide bait together. Um, I lost it uh, the, like the first or second day out with it there. I caught a nice fish on it, and then I lost it uh, to the uh, depths of JV, Davy Jones' locker via a, a water sprinkler thing. We have these uh, ponds around here that have uh, big uh, fountains in the middle so people can feel fancy, I guess. And uh, I just got done telling him don't cast around it because you'll get stuck. And uh, to show him that that was the case, uh, I, uh, as a good parenting moment, also cast it around. It got stuck and lost it. So, gonzos. Anyway, so then I immediately came back to my shop with my tail between my legs, very sad, and I made this one right here. So, um, and my father got to use it. He's never been a glide bait fan, per se, but uh, he was impressed with the fish that he caught on it. So he requested one, and um, I was going to do another dollar general, you know, masterpiece there. Um, that's a joke. I didn't think that this lure was a masterpiece, but, um, but yeah, this, again, you know, I was going to do another dollar general thing, and I will. Um, I had fun making this. It seemed like you people, that's right, I said it, uh, liked watching that video, so I will be doing some more of those. Uh, but this week, we have to make a lure for my father. He outranks everybody here, so it's his birthday coming up. So happy birthday to him. He requested a trout, okay? Um, this is my sketch of a trout. Um, it is as trout-esque as I can get in the regular shop being a regular guy. So I already cut out my trout, and we're going to put it on this piece of wood. This is a... Um, let me see, what kind of wood is this? This is uh, yellow, and it was free. Yep, that's what kind of wood it is. This is a free piece of wood. This uh, was probably from a pallet that I uh, uh, borrowed permanently from somebody and um, have been using little bits of. So, um, But yeah, I cut this out already. This is about how it's going to look on there. That's going to be the, the thickness of it. And... Uh, you know, and that's the depth and breadth and all that business. So that's going to be our fish. So we're going to need to cut out this section here and then get going on it uh, a little more. We did use our fancy new Christmas stencils uh, for that. And uh, that worked out tremendously well. And the regular assistant is about to join me here. He's going to make a shad looking lure. Um, as is customary. There you go, buddy. Uh, well, I'm making this guy here and, uh, we'll try not to make this a super long three part series. We'll, uh, cut out all the, the minutia and silliness of it all and, uh, just get busy. Okay. So there is going to be our block. So we're going to get that cut out and, uh, you're going to need a smaller piece of wood. So we'll get one for you. Okay. So we have our chunk of wood cut out that we're going to use here. Um, this fits nice. There's a little bit of a, uh, knot over here. So we'll make that the tail section so it misses it. Um, and the rest of the grain looks pretty good. And so, uh, for those of you that watch the square bill crankbait build, the flat sided square bill crankbait for wintertime fishing, first off, thank you. And thank you for all my new subscribers and old subscribers. The, uh, I got a jigsaw here that I use to cut this stuff out with, and I always have problems with uh, making a nice 90 degree square cut, and I don't know why that is. 
I'm sure it's operator error. I'm sure there's people out there who know how to do that. If you have a good idea of how to make that look nicer, please let me know in the comments. Um, so I'm going to try to cut this out bigger than this so that I don't screw it up. That's always my problem is screwing it up. So we got to make our mark here though for, I want to start putting these marks on now. Pay attention, young man, for where our cuts are going to be so that we always keep track of those. All right. We got to remember to put that keyhole in early in the game as well. So we don't mess that part up. Okay, we probably need to find the center of this guy right now as well so that we can get this piece nice and centered and start to get these little cuts. You can take the headphones off, boy. We're not, uh, we're not making any noise right now. Okay, so we'll find the center line on this animal and, uh, and mark that out as well. That way we can start uh, doing the cuts that we need to do here, so. Okay. So we don't, uh, we don't really measure things in millimeters because we're in America, but it's a nice even number for you. So again, 40 millimeters. 20. 20, 20 that's right, that's half of it. So I'm gonna use this guy in the straight edge feature here, if I could move that down. On the line, whammo, slammo. Whammo, slammo. You go over to the bench over there somewhere. Take your uh, take your guy with you. Yes, sir. Okay, go and do what? Likewise. Oh. Here we go. Do that. Okay, well, I work on this one. We'll get out the jigsaw and we will cut this dude out. In the tradition of already getting ahead of myself, I just said it and I didn't even do it. I want to get all these holes drilled before I really start cutting into this animal. So we're gonna pause a second while it's still chunky and uh, line this up. Luckily I drew my idiot lines and I'm gonna draw a uh, circle here where I'm going to want my keyhole tail to be drilled. And we're gonna uh, put our friend all in there. <clears throat> Right in the middle of that dog. Okay. And we're going to drill that hole out now before we forget. Okay, plus we have our 10 millimeter eyes that also have to be drilled out. Line our fishy poo back up. Probably a good time to, uh, yeah. Is that what you got to say about that? Okay, we can probably glue this guy on here. That's why we made a bunch of copies of it. So we can get this right. Do this right. On the last one, a uh, video, somebody said, I got all fancy. Um, I think they were being facetious, but don't worry. This is just regular junk that I'm using here. This is my kid's glue. Uh, regular techniques. And there is nothing fancy about any of this. I can promise you that. Okay. So we're gonna do that so we don't mess it up. We'll glue this guy on so we don't mess it up more than I've already messed it up. Yes, there's other super better kinds of glue for this, but uh, this is what I have in the regular shop and that's what we're using. Let's move that out. Sounds like the regular assistant is being attacked by the regular dog over there. Somebody should do something. Are you dying there, boy? Yeah, the dog's eating you away. He's eating you, huh? Okay, well, call me if it gets serious. I'm just Okay, so there we go. We're going to cut our keyhole here, and we're going to drill out our eyeballs as well. All right. So we are ready for our keyhole drill. Let's make some wood chips. And we're gonna reset to draw the eyes. Okay, on this one here, uh, I'm gonna use this drill bit because I just want to hole all the way through so that later on when I've shaped the, uh, the bait, I can locate that hole. And hopefully, if I'm lucky, which I'm not, 
um, this will be um, the, these eyes will be able to be cut uh, uh, symmetrical. That's the word I'm trying to look for on either side. So even though this doesn't look like this because there's no thing on it, that should be in the same place because this is still fairly square. I've only messed it up mostly. Okay, so again, prepping the prep work. Um, I have, if I can find myself in space. Okay, so I've drawn these lines all the way out here and I've put in my jig, uh, which doesn't look like it lines up here on camera, but it does. So uh, this angle to go all the way down to here, but we probably don't want to cut to about there-ish. Um, just that, so those lines are already in place again before we get, get the whole thing cut out. So, all right. And this will be one of those three weeks later situations. Okay, so this cut has begun. Um, you can see I didn't come in exactly where I wanted to there. I don't know why I did that at 90 degrees instead of the 30 degrees I was supposed to. So that's why that messed up. But uh, we're still going to make it work. It'll be okay. It's going to come to this point here instead, which is just perfectly fine. And uh, we'll still have plenty of tail on this lure. Um, hopefully it will work out uh, for the better. We'll make it work. No big deal. So we're going to continue on uh, getting to this shape now that we've got all this stuff cut out. And uh, it should help us out um, tremendously as we progress to make a more accurate lure. So um, again, I have all these copies because I can see I'm gonna to have to use them again as this one is getting destroyed, but I'm gonna need my references as I continue on. So we're gonna uh, continue with the jigsawing process and, uh, and then I'll show you what I got after that's all cut out. Okay, this is probably thus far the least inaccurate one I've made. Uh, the back got a little out of whack. We pretty much lost that whole area, but we did get these swoop de dupes here for the tail. <coughs> and our, our hole still looks pretty centered. So that's good. So now we need to work on these uh, chamfer lines for this area here, which is why we have more copies so that I can continue to cut them out and glue them on and draw them up, whatever. I'm trying to get this the most accurate uh, fish that I've made. So I'm going to get this cut out, and like I said, and glued on there. Right. So we've got our shape cut um, and sanded down, and I have uh, cut this piece out again and did us another center line. And it was nice to know that my silhouette here of the uh, top fit nicely right around there. Um, because of the angles here, uh, you know, that we've cut it, that has shortened it a little. So we'll just extend that out to the snoot. So, because these are the exact same length here, if I could line it up. Um, but our, the reason we're running a little shy, again, is because we've got all these little humps and bumps to, uh, to deal with there. So, uh, but that'll be close enough for us. So we've got that done. And uh, let me just make a little quick commentary on this super long, ridiculous video already. Uh, when you make something like this, and uh, this is still like a regular thing that regular people can do. I just watched a lot of videos on people using them and saw the impressive fish that they caught. You very seldom catch a small fish on a lure this big. This lure here, you can throw it on here, is eight inches. I guess if we pinch the tail, we're just over eight inches, right? Um, this is a big lure. You know, most most lures you get for bass fishing are, are half the length. Four, four to five inches, you know, is very common. Even smaller, one, two, three, you know, whatever. So when you're out there for the first time throwing a lure that is as big as some of the fish that I catch on a regular basis, it's intimidating. And, you know, uh, you think pretty fast that this is never going to work. You're never going to catch anything on it. Even though I've seen the videos, I've seen the lunkers that people caught, uh, fish of a lifetime size fish on these things. Um, and it's so cool how they swim and on all that business, you know, um, it is really difficult to, to stick with it and work them. But, you know, my dad, you know, was a, you know, also same kind of camp there. Didn't want to deal with it. But, you know, he caught that nice big bass the other day. And I think that kind of helped solidify it that first time that you catch a fish and it's and then it's a decent fish on a lure that you made yourself that's a pretty good feeling you know and and even a uh and a regular guy like me can do that and that's the whole point again of this channel regular bass fishermen making uh you know irregular lures here on a regular budget so um something like this not this one because this is ugly but a professional version of this 
you know, go look on these lure websites. You can spend over a grand. Not on this one. <laughs> this one wouldn't be worth that. Let me repeat that. <laughs> Professional ones, right? There's handmade ones from uh, folks in Japan. And, uh, you know, it's just a couple hundred to several, you know, to a thousand dollars on that jazz. So, um, but you can make one yourself and catch that fish. And that's a pretty good feeling. It does take some patience. And uh, just with some regular woodworking tools, we can get this done. So I'm going to cut this out again and uh, get busy to shaping these lines. And I'll um, show you what we got. Okay, holy relief cut, Batman. Um, so I've got my slenderness <laughs> started, the contours on the edges here. I did a lot of relief cuts to help uh, ease the, uh, the issues I think I was having with that saw. And uh, that kind of helped. I'm sure it's mostly operator error, but we're gonna start coming into these lines here using our, uh, our fake bed sander, all right? Time to cut that little keyhole out. Okay, here's our keyhole. And uh, I'm gonna fit that a little better later, but basically uh, this tail needs to fit in there, and it almost does, so just a little bit of uh, file action. We'll get that tail to fit. I might actually need the bigger tail for this lure. I think we will. Here we are. Oh, and thank you to my regular family who are better than regular. Let me just say that. Um, but we got a new can of polyurethane for a new year. So more happy new years. We've got our uh, fish rough cut out pretty well. I think we're doing all right. Looks like uh, aside from this area here again, which whatever, close enough, I guess, right? But uh, it fits within our outline, it looks like. So that's good. And we've got this guy here, our contour. Looks like we have followed that pretty well. I guess we could stand to thin out the tail a little more, but uh, we'll probably leave that there for now and work on that with our, uh, our chamfer ing. So I gotta draw some chamfer lines on this guy and uh, like that so that we can start to bring in the, uh, the shape that we want here. So it might not be a bad time too to cut our lead holes in there but one crisis at a time all right so i've drawn in a bunch of messy chamfer lines uh to the untrained eye uh this looks like a giant mess and uh to the trained eye it looks like an even more mess and uh you're right but um here's the top and i have my first line that i want to do on either side and then i went in kind of just a little narrower uh and you know we'll see if it needs to be a little narrower once we get there so um this is a mess but it's okay uh, they're just guidelines for me i know how my crazy mind works uh when it comes to this stuff so it'll be okay and i'll just watch as i go so again we have our first goal basically and then we can bring it in a little more to get a little nicer shape and again that's taking off this whole chunk of fish here all right, uh, but first, before we do that, we're going to go over here. And I want to start drawing some lead holes, so I got to find my center line again, or a uh, close enough approxima approximation there too, and uh, and draw some lead, or, or drill some lead holes in this guy. So I was going to try something different this time for the lead hole. I was going to do a step drill um, rather than just a big old deal at the top, and I can always do the uh, Forstner bit there, but I just thought maybe that would uh, uh, a little better grip uh, when I pour the lead in there so they don't quite fall out so well. So we'll see. The holes are established, though, if I need to do something different. Never done that before. Just thought I'd try it. Okay, let's get chamfering. That's a thing.
So I was on the belt sander forever. My hands still feel like they're shaking. That's kind of funny. Uh, or they're sanding, I guess. And uh, that is what we got. I think we are there. It looks like we fit in our original shape pretty well. Again, we came down a little swoop de doop on the back there, but I'm okay with that. I don't know about this fin. I don't know if I can pull it off or not, but we will see. Uh, I'm going to drill the eyes now, and they look like uh, they are fairly symmetrical, which is uh, what we were going for. Our lead holes look like they were fairly symmetrical. These guys look like they got started to wander a little bit, but we maintained a pretty decent center line here. So uh, we should be good, and um, looks like the back is uh, is pretty nice as well. Uh, we've almost got our chamfer line down to here on both sides. So pretty happy with how this guy is working out. Um, I think once we get our eye sockets drilled, then we will uh, start working on. Or I'm going to do it this time. I say it every time, but I'm going to do this fin, this gill, and this mouth part if it kills me <laughs> all right i've done it before i did it on uh this guy over here that i don't have ready because i'm not a professional but um i did like a little brow thing i don't know if you can see that in there but uh it kind of went around his eyes kind of made like eye sockety looking things on it and um that was like the you know best carving I ever did and i gave him nostrils too so he could smell you know i wanted to have enjoy all his five senses I still got to repair this. I'm going to repair, probably repair this guy as I uh, finish this lure. But um, I said I thought it was going to need the bigger tail. Uh, I'm not sure now that we have taken it down so far. Still fairly thick. This is going to be like a, still a pretty heavy duty lure. But, um, but I think it'll be all right. It looks like it is. Yeah, it's a little bit bigger again than this guy. But... Uh, this was the first one I'd ever made, like I told you guys before. And we're a little thicker than that. I had come in on the sides of the head a little bit more on this guy. Um, this one is more torpedo-y shaped. So I guess I could do that. I could come in a skosh in this area here. Like that. Um, that might be why this one swims as nicely as it does, because it's got like a... That's Seabill uh, Magic Swimmer, Seabill, Seabill, I don't know, French name, down and thing. But any who's. So let me get these eyes drilled, eye sockets drilled out with our 10 millimeter eye driller outer, which is uh, this guy here, I believe. I do believe. Yes. All right. And uh, again, because I drilled that hole out, I'll just come in here and. Uh, be able to get both of those spots and because the carving is uh pretty decent uh i should be able to it should still look pretty symmetrical when it's done so i'm not tooting my own horn or anything like that it's just like i said like this is just regular equipment that i'm using nothing special uh it is it is dirty and cheap we just don't have the quick part over here these take time there's no way around that um if you want them to work well um, this wood right here, as you can see, started to crack. So we are going to super glue that tonight and let it set up. I did try to leave this part extra chunky. Um, this one here uh, was extra chunky, but I did come in and try to make it a little nicer in this area here. The one that I made uh, with my son, um, I wasn't paying attention and I got this area just a skosh thin. You can see this one as well. Right here, you know, it was probably a little thinner than it should have been. So I brought that keyhole out to the end, uh, absolute end of that tail, and made it more ball-shaped out there. So that we would have much more uh, meat, you know, kind of like I did on this one here. But this one's even more exaggerated than that. So it's uh, easy to get lost in the sauce when you are uh, sanding this until forever. Oh, yeah, i got to clean that nastiness up there. But, um, but I didn't. You know pay attention this whole time and didn't lose track of where i was so kind of happy with how that came out that, that was way too long all right i'm going to try the dangerous thing and i'm going to try to freehand it so that i can get a bit of an angle matching on either side and um, i really don't want to put this in the vise and mess it up so uh, as my big hand is in the way so we'll uh, see how mad i can screw this up okay that one was perfect that one failed to stay in the pilot hole 
So just like that, now our bait looks lopsided. Super duper. All right, so I guess I'm going to try that eye socket thing that I just talked about here. I tried pulling that one up a little bit. Uh, it looks a little less non-symmetrical, so we're going to uh, pretend that we can fix this as we carve it. All right, and uh, make it look not as obnoxious. Okay, let's try and not mess this part up here. Again, I'm not great at the carving. So, but the only way we can get better at this stuff, folks, regular viewers, is by trying it over and over again until we get it nice. So, I want to be able to carve nice. So, I'm going to try it again. Okay, now for my next trick, I will have smaller fingers and be able to hold this down. Okay, regular viewers, let me show you the damage we did. So, we have our fish. Um, it still fits there. Uh, we got the carving all done. Uh, the front end kind of got a little messed up here. Um, and I super glued that just to hold it in place so we can sand it now and clean it up. I super glued this uh, little tail knuckle thingy keyhole holder here so that we can continue to work on that. Um, so we need to sand this down to clean it up, sand it until forever. I tried to make it look like, uh, you know, like it had eye sockets or something. I don't know. Kind of got away from me there. Uh, the trout shape is, uh, you know, I tried to do the mouth parts on there. Like I said, they always look terrible. I never, I never like them, but, uh, I got to sand this, uh, like I said, until forever. So I got that mark in it that I got to get out. So I'm going to get to sanding. And we'll be back uh, when forever has come and gone, I guess. All right. So uh, forever has come and gone again. So that's two forevers. And I am done all the sanding I'm going to do. I keep finding more places that I should sand and want to sand. Man, I hate doing the mouth parts. I can't do them nice. And I think they just take away from the lure. I'm not going to quit. I'm going to keep on trying to do them. Someday I'll be better at it. But like I gouged here pretty well. Um, yeah, uh, this kind of, you know, I don't know, whatever. I tried to do those eyebrows like I had on the other lure. Uh, I don't know. I don't think it came out quite as nice or the same. Um, maybe I should take this little ridge down in the middle. Not 100% sure yet, but I think we've got uh, a nice smooth, enough, nice, smooth enough finish. The tail section here, this is a tail I made uh, for one of the lipless crankbaits. That doesn't make sense, but if you watch the video... Um, but I, I made it nice enough that it actually works as a good gauge for these. The tail that's going to go in it is going to be this here. It's a, a rubber or, you know, plastisol tail that I made a mold of. I have two different sizes here. I got the extra large. And then uh, this is this one here. And I can't, I haven't decided yet if I'm going to go with the extra big tail or with this one here i'm definitely not using this one but this one just works as a nice gauge for this this uh this has to be honed out uh much wider than um than you're going to want it because the epoxy coating so what i do for that is i have my chainsaw uh sharpening chisel uh you know, uh files there you go that's the word put it in my drill and just kind of run it through here like a reamer and uh and that does a pretty good job getting you a nice keyhole in there and then i run this smaller one here through this section just so that that opens it up as well so that this guy will there we go that's much better fall right through so when we fill it with epoxy we do want to be a little tight because again plastisol is malleable when it comes out of the uh the mold it's got these little ears on it i leave those on and just kind of like you know stretch it a little bit and pull it through and uh and then we'll drill a hole through here after we've epoxied it so that this doesn't crack further. And uh, this almost fits like that. Look at that. And um, and that's what pins it in place, just like that one there. So next we have to, uh, it's time to cut this guy here and um, start doing our um, nose point, tie-on points, and building the harness for the center here. Then we're going to have to seal this dog and uh, do the lead. So... Let me uh, get going with the saw and cut that up. All right. 
<sighs> Stressful part, cutting your bait in half. Might have to put this back in. This one didn't quite go through far enough. Well, this guy already has a really decent angle. Yeah, I think if I don't put it back in my jig, I'm going to mess this angle up here. So let me get that thing situated. Okay, I uh, added, I lined it up a little bit, and um, I think I'm going to not do a great cut on this one. Um, I must have messed up at the beginning. But we're going to try to go slow and steady here and win the race, hopefully. Not my bestest work, my most bestest, but I think I can clean that up a little bit. And uh, for sure, we have to pull these back way back here, and maybe we can uh, try and fix that then. Boy, I'm sorry. That was some, ah, uh... oh, oh well. Oh well. We'll try and clean that up. I had such a nice center line here, and we came in just to the wrong side of it. So bottom didn't do so bad, but can't win them all. Okay, so what the plan is here to use this Dremel tool we're going to come in and just kind of take down this side ever so slightly so that it uh, kind of lines up again with our center here um, and uh, clean it up on this side as well. But this should, this, this bit, this drum bit here should take up this whole section nicely so that we can, uh, so that we can try and correct it just a little bit. So it's not going to be perfect, but you know, I'm just a regular guy. So I'm going to uh, do that, uh, not so on camera, because this thing is loud and dusty, and I don't think it makes for good TV, but I'll show you what I get when I'm done. Okay, now we're going to seal this guy up. These are not glued in place. I'll glue these guys in right now, but these ones I won't. These I want to be able to come out um, so they can seal it properly. And then, um, yeah, that kind of stuff. And uh, as I get the lead in and all that business there. So, Okay, new year. New container of polyurethane. Go hang that up. Be right back. It's like bobbing for apples. There we go. Okay, that was terrible. All right, same routine. Can I just say real quick? I'm so uh, not accustomed to what that substance is because this is like what I've been working with the past few months. You know, but who? I mean, really, who can tell the difference? Exactly. All right, so our bait is all sealed up, and we have our. Uh, uh, wire in place uh, just temporarily can come out of here. I still got to adjust it a little bit It looks like it's off uh, the mark a skosh, but we'll take care of that later But we are going to uh, put some lead in this guy and uh, Try to check for buoyancy. So I'm going to try and attempt to put lead in here without burning myself I'm Gonna try to not overly lead it this time. I just want a little bit in there And because I'd rather fill it rather than having to take it out that makes sense. So I'm going to start the arduous and entertaining process of trying to um, uh, put this in a bucket of water and see if it's correct or not. And then uh, that takes like a couple tries, going back and forth. Look at me adding lead to it when I said I wasn't going to. That was too much, and I didn't want to add that much. Stop, man. Stop. Just stop. Okay. Leave well enough alone. All right. I'm going to try to stop. Okay. All right, so now we got to go get a bucket of water, and I'll let you know how that goes. Okay, so here we are in the less advanced aqua lab, um, the home aqua lab, and uh, yeah, really, and that's what my dog has to say about it. Anyway, I weighted this one. I got it pretty evenly distributed, and with just a few minor adjustments this time, I got it. It is floating ever so slightly, and I think. That's what I wanted because I think once I add the, the paint, uh, well, mostly the clear coat and the tail on here, it will probably be just enough to uh, make it uh, sink or hopefully the goal is to try and be neutrally buoyant. So it'll kind of like suspend because we are almost there right now. So 
Uh, we've got our hooks. We've got the O-Shack Hennessy's hanging from it with the um, with the proper um, little O-rings that or split rings that they're going to have on them. And we've got all the bubbles out and turn it over. So it just just under the surface there. So perfect. That's what we're going to go with. And uh, let's go put some lipstick on this page. All right. So um, we just need to fill these now with super glue and baking soda. And then uh, once that's dried, you sand them down forever until we get this nice contour back. But I have some bonus bait footage here. Uh, my first and favorite uh, swim bait. I re-epoxied it so that it can have a second lease on life. Um, this side that was coming off right here has now been uh, glued back in place and epoxied back in place. So all the little beat up areas underneath it. Now I have a nice thicker coat of epoxy with fancy sparkles on them. And, uh, and this guy right here, the one that was in our short for New Year's Day. Um, ow, the hooks are sharp. But uh, the nose here was all beat up from hitting rocks and stuff like that. And it was already, uh, the clear coat had wore off from that. So uh, when I had the extra juice from this guy, I redid the snoot on that guy. So, so this one will be uh, working a little bit better too. So good news. I will let you uh, know. I'll, I'll come back when this is all done. Yeah, basically, it's super glue, bake, baking soda, super glue, and then sanding forever. Not exciting television, but... I'll show you uh, when we're all done with that. Okay, so that part actually worked out rather nice. I was able to kind of put the peaks on those to match the peaks right there. So we just got to sand that down once it dries, just nice and even again. And we should be good to go. Generally want to glue your uh, clamp foot to your, uh, to your lure. But again, same Z's here. Uh, these came out nice and flat with that. So we're just going to sand those guys down and uh, and then we'll be ready to go on to painting. For final assembly, and we just need to put these guys in here, make sure they're the right way. I should put a mark on them so I know which way is the right way. So now these are good, we know that how they fit, so I'm gonna mark them because I will inevitably forget. With my friend. The Sharpie marker. I think this one is like hang, hangs up in the lead because you can't pull it out. You have to unscrew it. It slides in and then you have to unscrew it. It's weird. Okay, so two stripes was the bottom. One stripes was the top. Do you remember that? You could have just done one and one. Good point. That's why you have the brains of this outfit. Beauty and brains. All in one package. All right, now we need uh, a little bit of JB and or weld. So that one's definitely got epoxy in that joint, but that'll be okay. When it dries, I can pick it out of there with a pin. Okay. So there is the final fish. I still don't know if I should put the bigger tail on it or not. I want to see it with the bigger tail. See what, happens. what do you think of the bigger tail, dog? Yeah? I should be... The bigger tail. You're sure? Okay. Okay. So that's with the bigger tail. 
This is just a mock-up. I was going to make one. I stole it off this guy. Don't tell anybody. I was going to make one that was uh, greener. Greener pastures. That would fit this lure a little bit better. So, But there she be. We don't have a swim test yet. We plumb ran out of time. Um, so, But that will be coming here. Uh, maybe we'll do a short of that for you people uh, to enjoy. And uh, I hope you like this. This is, a, like I said, gift for my father here. And um, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, quandaries, anything you'd like to add in the comments down that way, please feel free. Thank you so much for the support and stay regular. Hey, what are you kids doing? <laughs>